I picked these out because these are the uh, main categories of sequence and series that you're going to meet first in year 12, and they're the easiest to deal with. So 1 plus 3 plus 5 plus 7. When there is a common difference, we call this kind of series an arithmetic series. That's or an arithmetic sequence. That's a really important phrase, so I'm going to put it in capitals. Arithmetic, arithmetic sequence or an arithmetic series. One more word, I hate that I'm putting so much language on you, but I want you to recognize it in the future. One word that catches both sequences and series is a progression. You're going forward in some way. Okay. So we would call this an arithmetic progression, an AP. This is also an AP over here. Yeah. Um, you can have all kinds of different arithmetic progressions. A lot of the ones that we've been looking at, they get bigger and bigger and bigger. But you can get ones that get smaller and smaller and smaller. So for example, um, let's go with something like, say, 7, 4, 1. So this is three terms. I've established a pattern. I could say dot, dot, dot. But can you tell me what the next term will be? Negative 2. And then negative five, and then dot 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 dot. So it just he can keep on going forever if I want him to. Okay. So the um, I'm going to give you a question now to help you wrap your head around this idea. Um, Noitha, right? You guys know that this series comes in. Um, there's a bunch that precede this. How many of you did Gauss? Did you do Gauss? Okay, a small number of you. So Gauss, very famous mathematician. He was posed this problem. I want you to put your pens down and just listen to the problem, and then we'll solve it together. Okay? Actually, I'll let you solve it first, and then we'll talk about it. As a young schoolboy, so the story goes, um, Gauss was very good at mathematics. So his teacher wanted him to just kind of put him in a corner and sort of get him out of the way because he was always like asking questions and he was doing things too quickly. So the teacher thought, I know what I'll do. I'll give him a task that will take him ages, and then he'll be at least occupied for a long time. And I know he likes mathematics. So the teacher said to him, okay, Gauss, what I need you to do, little Carl, is um, I want you to add up the numbers 1 to 100. Just add them all up, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, etc. Okay, and then come back to me in 10 minutes and give me the final answer. Okay? And to the teacher's dismay, Gauss instantly replied, the answer is, I can tell you what the answer is, but I want you to try and work out first. This arithmetic progression here, there's a common difference of two. Right? The arithmetic progression that Gauss's teacher gave him had a common difference of 1. Okay. So you could state it in any of these ways. I want you to ponder for a moment what might be an efficient way, rather than just 1 plus 2 is 3, you know, 2 you get 5, you add, etc. What might be an efficient way to add up all the numbers 1 to 100? Or even, because once you work it out, it'll be easy to generalize, 1 to 1,000 or 1 to a million. I'll give you a couple of minutes. If you actually have encountered this problem before, then go ahead and write down the solution uh, and call me over. All right, let's, let's have a look. So maybe you're scratching your head a little bit, and some of you have a bit of an advantage going to this because you've seen something like this before. So here's what I'm going to do. To sum this AP, the first thing that might be helpful is just to write what the thing is. So we said 1 plus 2 plus 3. That's enough to establish a pattern, so plus dot dot dot. The dot 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 indicates the continuation. But this one that I've given to you, or that the teacher gave to Gauss, is finite. So there's an end point at some location, and I need to state that. I could just say 100. That, that would be fine, because I know how I start, how I go, and how I end. But for the purposes of doing this, to sum that up, I'm actually going to add a few more terms. Whoops, sorry. Okay, so that's the entire series written in summary form. So what can I do here? Well, what Gauss did was, he said, there's symmetry here. Do you notice there's symmetry here? As you get bigger and bigger and bigger going from left to right, that means you also get smaller and smaller and smaller going from right to left. Do you notice that? And because there's a common difference, you're doing the same thing just in reverse. So therefore, it stands to reason. If you have a look at the first term and the last term, and you take their sum, as you move inwards from the outside, this term will be one bigger than the previous one. So this one is like plus one, okay? But this one will be one smaller than the other one that we just counted from, minus one, right? So the plus one and the minus one should balance out. 
which is why sure enough, these sum to 101, and these sum to 101, right? There's the same plus one, minus one, so it stays balanced. And you can keep this going forever, right? So therefore, you can work out if you pair up every term with its sort of opposite one on the end, right? If you pair up every term, then they all sum to 101, all the pairs, okay? So all you really need to know is, how many pairs are there? There's gonna be exactly 50 pairs because there's 100 numbers in total, aren't there? So you just have to take the sum of each pair, find out how many pairs, and then off you go, there's your answer, okay? Now, what mathematicians are always searching for is a way to generalize this. How can we go from a specific example to one that works all the time, if it was a thousand or a million? Or what if the common difference wasn't one? That was very convenient. What if it was like three or five or two and a quarter or negative eight? So, we need to write this in a more general form. So, a generalized AP, arithmetic progression, would look like this. There are only two numbers you need. You need a starting point, which since it's the first number, let's use the first letter in our alphabet to denote it, A. And then you need to know the common difference that gets you from one to the next. So, if I said, since it's a difference, let's call it D for difference. If A is the first term, what's the second term? It will just be this plus your common difference. Do you agree? That's it. Do you make it really good? Okay. That's the first term. There's your second term. What will the third term be? A plus another lot of that difference, right? Um, this is the third term. I've established, I've established the pattern, right? That's all I need. Eventually, we're going to get to the last term, right? If this is a finite series. So, do you notice the first term has how many differences? There are none. The second term has how many differences? The third term has... So you've always got one less than the number of terms you are. So if this is term one and term two and term three, then if I have some arbitrary number of terms, n terms, right? How many common differences will that guy have? One less, which is n minus one of them. Okay? So therefore, the very last term along the end here will be, you start somewhere, and then you have to add some number of those differences as you keep going. So that's the number of differences. Is that okay? Right, so now we can work out using this, we can uh, apply the same strategy, right? 101. 101. Where did this number come from again? It was the sum of the, the first and last terms, right? The first and last terms. So in this case, the sum of the first and last terms is going to be a plus a plus n minus 1b. Is that okay? So I can simplify that. That's 2a plus. Like that. Okay? That's the sum of the first and last terms. Then I had 50. Where did 50 come from? What's the significance of 50? Okay, so I could say it's the last term divided by 2. The reason why it's the last term divided by 2 is that I am pairing up. It's, it's how many pairs there are, right? So that's the operation that gives this, this number. And the way to find out how many pairs there are is to divide that by 2, right? Or rather, divide the number of terms you have, which is n in this case, by 2. Just conveniently, in our previous example, the last number was how many terms there are. Okay, this is the formula. Now, what's really lovely about this formula is that it actually solves a problem which we didn't even discuss before, which was, see this series here? Conveniently, you can pair up every term. You can pair everything up. Right? But it doesn't take much to create a problem where you can't pair everything up. What could I do to this? What subtle change could I make that would make this unpairable? How many terms are there here again? There's an even number of pairs, a hundred of them. So all I have to do to make it unpairable is add another number, right? Like that. Now my question to you is, will this work? Will this approach still work? Um, have a look at this formula, right? Now, because we already know what the first 100 add up to, it's not hard to work out what the first 101 add up to. I want you to have a go for a second 
at evaluating this. This is this formula we've developed. And because it's the sum of the first n terms, rather than um, calling it Tn, we would call it Sn for some. Have a go at evaluating that formula down the bottom there. You know what the first term is. You know what the number of terms is, and you know what the common difference is. Try it out for this guy here. This guy here. If I went a little bit further, what would happen? Let's see what, see what you get. 